Th there's there's some cookies right here, sir. <laughs> you don't have to look at me like I'm a tuna sandwich. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I want to play a game called Aftertaste. Ooh. The bell rings above my head, and the door shuts softly behind me. The scent of fresh brewed coffee and miscellaneous baked goods fills my nostrils. How nostalgic. I don't think I like coffee, though, but I'm also not sure if I like it. I forget what I was planning on doing, then. Maybe I've just come by for a quick snack. But just like how I can't remember if I like or dislike coffee, I can't remember if I like or dislike croissants or lemon bars. I don't think I've ever tried a lemon bar. I have to retrace my steps and figure out what I came in here for. Hmm. <laughs> That's when my eyes land on him. The reason that I downloaded this game. <coughs> what a looker. Wait, get a hold of yourself. What? That's exactly what I would think. <laughs> Sitting at a table by the bookshelf, the extremely handsome man types at a laptop that looks dreadfully old. I'm not really focusing on the outdated technology, though. I'm focusing on his everything else. <laughs> he pauses to run his fingers through his lavender-dusted hair, brushing most of it out of his eyes. Lavender is my favorite shade of purple. <laughs> The skin of his rather impressive-looking forearms, sneaking out from under rolled-up sleeves, is sun-kissed and sweet-looking. His entire manner of dress feels odd to me, but I don't know why. Dark, purplish colors, accentuated by gold accessories and trim matches hair. Huh? But my eyes can't stop. No, that's not right. They refuse to move away from his... his... bountiful bosom. <laughs> I am looking... disrespectfully. The sheer cloth stretched across his chest leaves only a little to the imagination, but that's all right. My imagination is as boundless as he is. <laughs> Sir... Please forgive my dis- my s disrespectful stares. The man's gaze rises. I've been staring for longer than socially acceptable after all. <laughs> yeah. He flashes an inviting smile, taps a few more things on his laptop, and closes the lid, sitting back and taking a sip from his mug. His gaze wanders away, but his smile does not fade. Okay. Okay. Keep it cool. <laughs> Calm down. I'll figure out whatever I was doing after I speak to this man. I'll be quick, really, I will. But maybe I should get a drink first while I'm here. As they say, when in Rome, do as Romans do. Though I'm not sure if that applies in a cafe where you're supposed to get a drink or snack. <clears throat> oh. Talk to the barista, or talk to this gentleman here. Can I, can I touch anything else? Neat. Okay, let, let's be normal for a little while. <laughs> Not be so thirsty right off the bat. Hello, cool-looking barista. I walk up to the barista. They seem kind of bored until they see me, giving a small wave. Good morning. The sun is shining nice today, isn't it? But the ice is slippery. <laughs> Why was that my first thought? If you know, you know. I totally wish I was at home, enjoying the weather, but my shift is almost over. Ah, yeah, the weather is great. I can't remember what the weather is. I'll just take a coffee with a lot of cream and sugar. The barista gives a nod, punching it into the register. It's an old-timey one, which is mildly fascinating. Hmm. 
When it comes time to pay, I go to pull out my wallet out of my pocket. But it's not there. Oh man! Surely, I have to have a wallet, right? Trying not to seem frantic, I pat myself down, jamming my hands into every pocket. But I come up empty. Shoot! Sorry, can you cancel? I guess I left my wallet at home. My face heats up in embarrassment, no matter how hard I will it to not to. Moments like these are almost as embarrassing as the ones where my card gets declined. They give me a sympathetic look. Just when they're about to cancel, though, a strong voice carries itself across the cafe. Handsome fellow. <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't worry. Ah. Put it on my tab, will you? Now my face burns for an entirely different sort of embarrassment. <laughs> my mind races with thinking up an appropriate apology and expression of gratitude. You're always so nice, sir. So the barista calls back, and they run the transaction through. I stand there at the counter, dumbly. The barista turns away and grabs a coffee cup, adding in plenty of sugar first. In an effort to cool my head off so I can at least pretend to be calm when I meet my coffee savior, I open my mouth. Do you have plans after work, then? Or just want to enjoy the sun? The barista pauses. They continue to fill up the cup with sugar. Not really. Just don't want to be here. Aw, it can't be that bad. But I did get a new toy for my darling little snake, so I'll set it up. Plus, he'll be hungry, I bet. And when he gets hungry, he starts eyeing his own tail. Aww. Honestly, he acts like I have never fed him in his life. Anyway, here you go. They hand me a mug with... Obtained coffee. They hand me a mug with a tan-colored coffee. Steam rises from it, and I take it carefully. Oh, thanks. Uh, hope you get off soon, then, so you can take care of your pet... Thanks, me too. They lean in, dropping their voice to a whisper. Subconsciously, I lean in too. <laughs> By the way, Yona over there really is nice, but he's always alone. Make sure to treat him super nice, Kay? I swallow, thank them for the coffee again, and nod. Thank you! Stealing myself for the inevitable, I take a deep breath turn around, and immediately get caught up in how beautiful the man's eyes are. Again. With a wry smile, he beckons me over. I hold fast to the mug. Hello. I sit down across from him. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay... F Lord, have mercy. Oh! Uh. The soul has left my body. Monsieur, put that away! You're far too handsome! Um, thank you for chest. I, I, I mean, thank you for boba. I, I mean, thank, thank you thank you for pecs. I, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks for paying. And immediately blow my first impression. Hey, well, at least you didn't say what I just said. <laughs> Seriously, how lame can I be? But Yona seems to not mind. Chuckling, he takes a sip of his coffee. <laughs> no worries. I recognized you by the door. I'm a big fan, you know. So I jumped at an opportunity to help you. Oh no. Please tell me you're not another biggest fan. I can't take any more fans. Apologies if I've overstepped my boundaries. Wait, you recognize me? Hold on, that brings up a very good question. Who am I? When I walked through the front doors of the cafe, I had forgotten what I planned to do once inside. Ugh. Which is normal. Walking through doors seems to make people forget that sort of stuff all the time. That's why I was intent on retracing my steps, up until Yona met my gaze, and I moved it down my list of priorities. <laughs> I hadn't stopped to realize. I can't remember anything at all. This is going to prove troublesome, isn't it? I'm an 
amnesiac. Even my name eludes me. Yona seems to know who I am, though. I must be somewhat famous enough. Even though I can't remember what I could be famous for. The man across the table from me sets his mug down, and I notice it's half empty, filled with pure black coffee. Of course. Who wouldn't recognize one of the most famous detectives of all time? You're like a modern-day Sherlock Holmes, someone right out of an Agatha Christie book. Sherlock Holmes? Really? Me? Because I can't solve the mystery of who I happen to be. Yona considers for a moment, thoughtful. Actually, my latter assessment might be closer to reality. You're Hercule Poirot in the flesh. Nice reference. <laughs> oh my gosh, his eyes are so pretty! I scratch my chin, trying to recall any sort of memory that would make this sound believable to me. Me? A famous detective? For some reason, it's hard to believe. Sensing such disbelief, Yona waves a hand, dismissing both his thoughts and mine. I hope I didn't offend. I suppose you probably get compared to a fictional detective often. I know how tiring comparisons like that can be. Really? Who do you get compared to then? Really? Who does someone like you tend to get compared with, if you say such a thing? It has to be... Adonis. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. <laughs> no, no, well, it might be just that. He certainly looks the part. <laughs> oh no! He's doing the scary anime glasses that I like so much. <gasps> no, my other weakness! <laughs> Yona wastes no time with answering the question, as if he was prepared for this. His glasses shine, almost menacingly. <laughs> the Greek god Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> it takes every effort of every fiber of my entire being to not fall right off the chair from internal embarrassment. Can he read minds? I hope not. Because then he would be seeing the word booba, chest, and bosom in my mind. Actually, I like the whole thing, not just the chest. Is that so? I wouldn't have made the connection at all, really. Yona says nothing, simply smiling. I wonder if he can see through me. Maybe I should move on to the next topic, for my own sake. So, if you know who I am, who are you? My, what a broad question to ask. He pushes his glasses, grinning from ear to ear like I said some sort of secret joke. I didn't think it was all that out of the ordinary, though. Should I be more specific? That might help. I'm terrible at talking about myself. Especially when you really don't give me much to go off of. Hmm. What should I ask him about? Where are you from? Are you from around here? Or did you just come from Greece? Adonis? I say the question easily, like I was born to. But... Yona's posture changes just ever so slightly. Mm -mm. Almost imperceptibly, he sits just a little bit straighter, smiles just a little bit smaller. I think I wasn't supposed to ask something like that. Well, I was genuinely, genuinely curious. He might have had a bad home life, or maybe all of his family are dead. I think about apologizing. Then he finally speaks. No. No? Okay. His tone is cool and even. I'm from... dreams. Okay. Definitely from some of my dreams. Uh, actually, no, that's, that's not true. Most of my dreams are full of anxiety, not hot guys. <laughs> he says it so seriously that I have no choice but to believe him. I'm not certain you would understand. Is there anything else? Uh, what are your hobbies, sir? What do you like to do for fun? Fun? Yeah, like hobbies. Knitting, golfing, drawing. 
I can't remember for the life of me what I enjoyed doing for fun. Maybe Yona telling me about his will jumpstart part of my memory. Yona considers the possibilities, thoughtful. I enjoy reading, but that may come from being a novelist. I do enjoy researching all about coffee, however. Coffee? Mmm. He holds his cup up, as if displaying a sample in an experiment, and considers that, too, with a tilt of his head. Coffee. Tasting, sampling, brewing, mixing. I even frequently travel to coffee bean fields just to take in the scent and roast the beans in a specific personal way. Like how some people are all about wine, wine tasting, and wine making. That is how I treat coffee. In fact, someday I... Yes? His words catch in his throat and he hesitates. It's the first time I've seen him close to nervous since I sat down with him. Hmm? He shakes his head. Never mind. It isn't important. I want to ask him what he's going to say, but maybe I should focus on something else. Uh, your name? The barista told me your name was Yona. They told you correctly. You can indeed refer to me as Yona. It's honestly such a pretty name. I think it suits you, really. Yona doesn't say anything immediately to that, as if he might be lost in his thoughts. His expression doesn't change, though, even when he finally responds. He continues to wear that ever-pleasant smile. You think so? Of course. I wouldn't say something like that and not mean it. Trust me. Yona nods and he says nothing further about this. Do you have any other questions? Uh, what do you do for a living? I am a writer. He gestures to the laptop, patting its closed lid gently. Really? What sort of stuff do you write? He considers the follow-up question for a moment or two, thoughtful. Mainly mystery novels, sometimes horror novels. I am quite a fan of locked room mysteries, and I tend to specialize in them. Hmm. Hmm. At least, they are the most fun for me to figure out. They don't sell well nowadays. In general, I mean, they used to be quite popular back in the day, as it were. So, compared to your other things, then? And other people's other things, too. My other novels are pretty standard fare, I would say. Is there anything else you would like to ask? Uh, I, I, I don't have anything else. That's all the questions. Hmm, I think that's it. I don't have any other questions to ask right now, probably. I made you talk a lot, though. Sorry about that. He waves a hand, dismissing the thought of it being a bother with a serene smile. And I enjoyed having someone to talk about myself to. <laughs> it isn't too often that such an opportunity comes up. It's unfortunate, but not too many people talk to me. Really? I'm glad to be able to help then. Is there a reason why you're always alone, though? I do a lot of my writing here in this place. I would assume people are genuinely being considerate and not wanting to bother me. Oh. Ah, uh, wait. I'm not bothering him, am I? My worry must be written across my face, because he chuckles. It's all right. It was I who invited you over for a chat, after all. You didn't encroach upon my work time whatsoever. I am ahead of schedule at any rate, so I can afford a little... How shall I say this? Goofing off. <laughs> right. Goofing off. <laughs> His eyes are so pretty. Is this what goofing off is to him? He must be quite dedicated to his work. I'd love to hear about your novels. Wait, does that sound too eager? If you'd like to share them with me, of course. I add the last line hastily. Yona places his chin in his palm, leaning on his elbow. Why, of course. I shall tell you about them. 
But I do think it is better for you to read one of them yourself. At least one. How many books have you written? He winks. Dozens. It'll take you weeks to get through them all. But I'm sure you have all the time in the world. Unfortunately, I do not have any more time for the day. It's getting rather late, so I should be going now. Jonas says this as he looks at the clock on the wall. The sun's golden rays coat the floor of the cafe. My eyes glance out the window to see the day slip by, slowly but surely. I assume this moment would never end. In fact, I don't want it to end. Swallowing such shameful thoughts, I turn back to Yona, who wears that soft, soft smile. Those eyes that drill right through the very core of my being. I almost, almost forgot how to speak. We'll see each other again, right? He gives me a look. It's one that I can't well describe. It almost looks like one of... Hunger. Oh, n oh no. Oh wait, no. Which hunger are we talking about? I have a feeling we have met for a reason. A classic line straight out of a romance novel. At least it sounds like something that would be from one. It goes straight through my heart and out the other end, at any rate. Yona doesn't seem to notice, or maybe he does, and simply doesn't care. Just how utterly lovestruck I've become. <laughs> He's like, you've been staring at my chest this entire time, miss. We'll be seeing a lot of each other in the next few days. What makes you say that, sir? And beyond. What makes you say that, sir? I did talk a lot about myself today, but I want to get to know you tomorrow. He says tomorrow, definitively, as if there is not even a shadow of a doubt that we wouldn't cross paths one once more. You're either overly confident, or you know something that I don't know. He definitely looks hungry. There, there's, there's some cookies right here, sir. <laughs> you don't have to look at me like I'm a tuna sandwich. Like he wants to devour me. Now, now devour literally or figuratively. <laughs> My face heats up. Yona takes to his feet. He's already put his laptop away without me even realizing. So caught up was I in his voice and looks and words. He never stops smiling. I'll say it again and again. He never stops smiling that dreamy smile. <laughs> Sir, that smile is going to get you married again. It was a pleasure to meet you. Detective. I'll see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Mm. I am both frightened and allured. Leaving me no room to respond, Yona picks the cup he had been sipping from all day. He drops it off on the countertop, behind which the barista is busy cleaning the espresso machine. Yona does not look back when he exits the cafe abruptly, leaving me behind. I sigh a quite heavy sigh, burying my face in my hands. Why is it that I feel like I want to be devoured by him? <laughs> Same. I mean, I wouldn't mind it. That sounds bad, doesn't it? It sounds... well... Anyway, I want to take stock of this somewhat strange day. I breathe in, then out. In, then out. I feel remarkably calm, even when I realize I didn't really get anywhere in learning who I was. Well, I did learn that I am a world-famous detective. Mm -mm. I suppose that counts for something. A sigh escapes my lips, and my shoulders slump forward in defeat. Burying my face in my hands, I stay like that for a moment. The sun is completely set now, and the fluorescent lighting overhead flickers once, briefly. The cafe is silent. 
Besides the barista, I'm the only one that remains. Somehow, though, I get the sense Yona remains, too. At least his presence lingers all around me. Mm -hmm. I struggle to not think of where he's gone for the night. Does he have a home of his own? I presume so. At least someone of his caliber must have an expensive roof over his head. I wonder how he decorates. It would be something charming and elegant, just like the man seems to be himself. Does he live on his own? Or does he live with a family he doesn't want to tell me about? Sighing, I shake my head. I really shouldn't bother with such thoughts for the moment. For the next few moments, I wonder about where I'm supposed to stay. Is my house around here? Or am I just visiting? If the latter, then where? I surely can't sleep out here on the street, but it wouldn't make sense for a detective to not have a bed, especially someone as famous as I supposedly am. I think for a few more moments. It feels like the answer is on the tip of my tongue. Hmm. Come on, think. The answer to my problem is in my inner coat pocket. I just have a feeling that this is completely and utterly true. Without a moment's delay, I reach inside, finding a thin piece of plastic within. It's labeled, The Night Castle Hotel. Hmm. Flipping it over, it tells me the specific room number the card belongs to. 225. That's right. Woohoo! I do remember staying at an extremely fancy hotel. I'm relieved to know I didn't lose the card. I don't know what I would have done if I had. Maybe just sleep on a couch in the hotel lobby or something. But they surely would have called the police on me for loitering, and that wouldn't go over well with my superiors, probably. I took the card back into my coat center pocket. When I stand, my feet have become leaden and heavy. It makes it a little difficult to move. I'll just have to deal with it for now. I take my own cup to the counter, realizing I didn't drink much of it at all, setting it next to Yona's. The barista notices me, and winks. <laughs> my face flushes, I chew on my bottom lip. Giving a small wave of farewell, I hurry out of the cafe, pleased to learn that I did not forget what had just happened upon exiting. Hmm, well it's good we figured that out. The bell chimes, and cool, fresh air fills my lungs to their capacity. Such air from outside the cafe is so crisp, it contrasts with the ambient warmth of the inside. Ooh. Finding a new sense of resolve due to the atmosphere out here, I straighten my back and take a few steps out onto the road. I turn around to survey the front of the cafe and surrounding areas. It has a somewhat gothic, old-fashioned exterior. Somehow, this feels exactly like the type of place I'd not only want to go to myself, but a place I'd find someone like Yona in. Can't stop thinking about that man! To the left of it is a used bookstore. A lamp glows softly behind frosted glass windows, but the sign reads closed. Beyond the bookstore lies an ice cream parlor. Like the bookstore, the shop appears to be closed, its windows shuttered. Spring hasn't come, so there's no way a place like that would be open for the season yet. I mean, I'm one of the insane people who will eat ice cream in winter. <laughs> to the right of the cafe looms a grand hotel. The building is so tall that it pierces the clouds themselves. No matter how far I crane my neck, I can't see the top of it. This must be the Night Castle Hotel, where I'm staying. To the right of the hotel is a fish and game stop. There are displays of wooden fish, deer, and rabbits on the inside, and the awning is torn. Hmm. But it otherwise also appears to be closed. Somehow, I feel disappointed. I look back towards the cafe, where the barista has come to stand in the window to flip the sign from open to closed. <laughs> It really must be getting late. Without further ado, I pass through the revolving door of the hotel. 
I have no problems calling an elevator up to the second floor. There doesn't seem to be many people out at the time. Even the front desk was unmanned. Hmm. Approaching room 225, I swipe the card, and the door beeps softly to allow me entry. Ooh. Once inside, and after I close the door behind me, I'm overcome with a sudden wave of fatigue. I don't bother getting changed. I barely have the awareness to take my shoes off before climbing into the bed. Mm. My eyes slip closed, and I fall into a deep slumber. Oh, may I dream of lavender-haired, bespectacled, uh, men. <laughs> the bell rings above my head. It's really quite a pleasant sound. Soothing. Like yesterday, the scent of freshly ground coffee envelops me. That, too, is soothing, even if I don't care much for the taste. I force my eyes to scan the entire scene before looking towards the corner for... him. I don't want to be disappointed prematurely. Oh, I thought I heard Castlevania for a second. The barista manning the counter is different. They don't seem particularly interested in doing work. Instead, they're playing on a handheld video game console. That sounds like Castlevania, and I want to I want to play that too. Two customers are present today. A man at his laptop, who looks very disgruntled, and a woman reading a book, calm and serene. They might be fun to speak to. But now... Oh! S sorry, folks. I allow myself a glance towards the table Yona and I sat at the previous day. Hi, Yona. There Yona sits, beautiful and elegant as ever. He brushes his hair back with his fingers, even though not too much has fallen in his face. Though he has his computer with him, it lays closed and off to the side. Instead, he reads from a small book with a black cover. I can't see the title from over here. He brings his mug to his lips, sipping peacefully. Beautifully. I swallow something thick. A frog cut in my throat. <laughs> I want to say so badly that I had a dreamless night, but I can't. I'd even rather say I had a nightmare, but I can't. You see, my dreams were filled with Yona. <laughs> even saying it like this, in my internal monologue, makes me feel like someone entirely and wholly love-struck. In this dream, that seemed to last for hours. <laughs> Should I remember the dreams? Yeah, sure, why not? Sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know whether I can actually stop myself now that I've already started to remember it. It began in my hotel room. At least, I think. It looked like a hotel room, at any rate. I was just about to get into the bed and rest for the night when a knock came at my door. Mm -mm. Even though it was late, I didn't see a reason not to answer it. But I did grumble the entire way to the door. My complaints died on my lips, though, when I saw it was Yona. We didn't speak. Aloud, anyway. Somehow, we knew what the other was thinking. He took me by the hand, leaving me just barely enough time to close and lock the door behind us both. He led me to the bed. There, we embraced one another. I laid down in the bed, arms spread out on either side of myself. He straddled my waist, leaning down. And then, Yona... Ah! Yona devoured me. Not in a sexy way, but in, like, the cannibal way. He began with my heart cutting it out with fingers as sharp as a beast's claws. While it was still beating in his hands, he bit into it, blood dripping down his chin. Strands of his bangs fell against the muscle, blood coating the tips of his soft, soft hair. Even after his second and third bite, my heart continued to beat. Mm -hmm. Ah! 
I watched him slowly eat my heart. I didn't stop him. I don't know how long it took him. Once finished, he leant down and kissed me on the lips. I tasted my own blood on his tongue. It's really, really embarrassing to admit, but I wanted to devour him, too. I bared my teeth and sank it into his neck, and I drew blood. We consumed each other piece by piece, kiss by kiss, until there was nothing of either of us left. Hold on! Well, that was some dream. Me? Hold on. Wait a second. I really shouldn't be remembering this when he's right in front of me. Hey, I had a dream that you ate me, and then I ate you. It was cool. <laughs> Strange dream. Mm-hmm. I squeeze my eyes shut tight and exhale a forced breath. Yona suddenly looks up from his book, and a grin blooms on his features. He's peering at me, and he looks really happy to see me. Awkwardly, I give him a small wave. He waves back, gesturing towards the seat across from himself. I nod, holding up a palm to signal for him to please wait for a moment or two. I gotta get my coffee and my cookies! I should get something to drink, but first... Patting my pockets, I pull out my wallet. It was in the hotel room. I had noticed it when I woke this morning, and I was certain to not forget it a second time. I put the wallet back into my pocket, right next to the keycard. The menu board is proudly displayed on the wall, just behind the counter. It lists basic things that any self-respecting coffee shop and cafe would have such as coffee, latte, americano, cappuccino. Unfortunately, all of the prices are obscured by some kind of dirt or debris. Hmm. Despite being clean in every other area of the store. Hmm. I would reach up to try to wipe it off, but I can feel the barista's gaze on me. If only they weren't there, I might have been able to see what it really says. Hmm. Is that a clue of some sort? Oh well. Cakes. A see-through display case with many tears. Mmm. Inside are various baked goods on immaculate dishes. A row of bear claws. Some plain butter croissants. An entire tray of brownies with only one brownie missing. An assortment of muffins in a few different flavors. There's a few more items, too, including a three-tiered miniature chocolate cake. Oh! Miniature three-tiered chocolate cake. If only I were a sweets person. Even if I enjoy coffee with a lot of sugar, that's more to mask the flavor of coffee itself. Otherwise, the bitter aftertaste is too much for me. Even still, all these fresh-looking desserts are making my mouth water. But looking at the barista, and how angrily they're looking at me, I decide not to push my luck. Besides, I can think of someone sweeter. Ooh, <laughs> uh, who even am I? Why am I so... Why am I so thirsty on Maine? Hey, buddy. Let's get you back to your Castlevania. The barista doesn't look up when I approach the counter. Mm. I give them a few moments to notice me. It's the polite thing to do. They continue to play their game. That is definitely Castlevania, isn't it? I know that sound effect, that door opening sound effect anywhere. I can sort of see their screen from my vantage point. They seem to be playing a platformer, controlling a white-haired man and destroying various undead creatures. Yeah, I better not interrupt this gentleman and or madam because they are playing one of the greatest games in history. I clear my throat, hoping I don't sound too impatient. Their fingers do not stop hitting the buttons, but they do look up, and they don't seem too pleased. Why do I feel kind of bad for interrupting them? What is it? I'd like to order. Are you sure? The question throws me off so bad, I can't answer right away. Am I sure I want to order something at a cafe? 
Is that what they're asking? Well... Yes! <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'll just take a regular coffee with a lot of cream and sugar, please. They roll their eyes, turning back to their game. They pause it, put the handheld to sleep, and stand up. They do not speak the entire rest of the time they brew the coffee, adding in copious amounts of cream and sugar. They don't even look at me. Unceremoniously, they hand me the mug of piping hot coffee. That'll be twenty-five twenty-five. Hmm. Sorry? They roll their eyes again, tapping their foot against the floor. Listen, buddy, twenty-five dollars for one coffee? Twenty-five twenty-five. Pay up or leave? Twenty-five dollars and twenty-five cents? That much for a single cup of coffee? I had no idea to be so much I won't pay it. Maybe it's the sugar and cream. Are they charging extra for basic condiments? Oh, well, it's already made, so it'd be a waste to tell them to throw it out. Though I'm reluctant to do so, I hand over my credit card. The barista swipes it without a care in the world before handing it back. Now I feel extra terrible for Yona, having paid for me yesterday. I really have to make it up to him. Let me just give you one or two of my fingers, Yona. I think you might enjoy that. I don't think you should have did that. You may be playing the greatest game in the universe, but you're on my poop list now, friend. Yona! Yona, you see what they're doing to me? It's highway robbery! <laughs> Yona looks like he's been expecting me. When I approach his table, I don't say anything, waiting for him instead to say something. It's not hard to be excited, but flashes of the dream I had last night appear in my mind every time I blink my eyes. He doesn't look up, chuckling quietly a few moments later. I did offer you to seat with me already, did I not? Oh, yes, I suppose you did. I sit down across from him. He closes his book, setting it off to the side, and takes a sip of his coffee. He peers over the rim of his glasses, into my own cup I've set on the table. It seems you've put even more sugar in it today. More cream, too. Yeah, uh, the barista didn't seem too friendly. They just kept adding more and more. I think they didn't want me to come back up to them to ask for more later. Wow, quite efficient that one is. Were they? Really? I failed to see what qualifies as efficient in his eyes. You should try it without so much cream and sugar. You will be thankful you did so. I'll... I'm not sure I can do it black, but maybe I can build up to it. That's the spirit. He smiles, and I feel the urge to try it black next time. Anyway, did you get a good night's sleep after we parted? My face heats up, and my gaze immediately turns away. Oh, I slept well all right. I sure did. <laughs> but, but, I can't say that. Unfortunately, I take too long to answer this simple attempt at small talk, and Yona picks up on it. He frowns, concern written across his face. Oh dear, you must have had a nightmare then. A nightmare, he says. I'm sorry for making you remember such a terrible thing. No, no, you've got it all wrong. For some reason, I thoroughly enjoyed the fact that you ate my heart, and I ate yours. <laughs> For another reason, I want it to happen again. <laughs> I take a deep breath, stealing myself, trying to think of what to say. How do I explain this without sounding like a deranged lunatic? After all, who dreams something like that a day after meeting someone? Who fantasizes about being devoured in the first place? Gotta say, I don't think I've ever had one of those. That's a first. My eyes meet his once more, with some level of difficulty. How should I put this? Uh, on further thought, it was very nice. I mean, they seem to enjoy it. I don't know if he is aware of what occurred in that dream, but... On further thought... I had a really nice dream. You were there. I instantly regret saying that, but it's too late. 
The words have already tumbled out of my mouth. Hmm. Whatever. I'm thankful I've at least left out a few... <coughs> details. Yona tilts his head, my admission giving him pause. And then... His cheeks flush, and he smiles a different sort of smile. This makes him seem livelier than ever, somehow. He's alive, too, just like I am. Bashful, after he's recovered from the initial shock, he looks away, tracing random patterns onto the table with a fingertip. Aww. Is that so? I'm... flattered. To think I've already made such an impression on you. Well... He clears his throat, trying to seem a bit more professional. This only makes my face feel even warmer. I feel lightheaded. It really is flattering, I assure you. No wonder you didn't want to tell me at first. But it's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, I think it's entirely natural for humans to have that sort of... reaction. So you say, but... I don't think dreaming of eating one another is natural. Something just tells me that. Hmm... I probably should be paying more attention to this journal. I avert my gaze again, even though he still isn't looking my way. But we can't sit like this in silence forever. I clear my throat. Anyway, how about you? How did you sleep last night? Nicely, I hope. He picks up his mug to sip at its contents again, taking his time. Mm -hmm. The smile on his face says that he had a very, very nice night. It was pleasant. That's all he ends up saying. Looking over the rim of his glasses again, gazing at me with that same fondness, that same hunger, as he did last night. Mm. As he did in my dream. It's enough to drive anyone mad. I do feel mad. But he says nothing more whether it's on his quality of sleep the prior night, or any next topic. It's almost like he wants me to ask him about it. Then you must have had a nice dream too? <laughs> then the dream you had must have been really nice, I presume. Nice doesn't even begin to describe it. You were in my dream after all. And together, we had a bountiful feast, you and I, and after. I swallow subconsciously, leaning forward in an attempt to hear him easier. <laughs> well, you know. I don't know, sir. I would like to know. <laughs> but then again, maybe we shouldn't discuss this in a public place. He winks, dropping his gaze, but his smile only broadens. It's a knowing sort of smile. Are you doing some shenanig- are you doing some dream shenanigans, sir? Then we both dreamed of each other, did we? And it seemed to have been that sort of dream as well. We just met each other. But then again, I was staring at your chest disrespectfully. I'm not really sure what to make of this information. That being said, maybe he's lying. Surely it isn't a coincidence we both dreamt of the other, in that manner. I don't know, maybe in this game I'm a cutie patootie with a nice chest as well. <laughs> maybe I'm being too obvious. Ugh, there's no way he would know. His expression is easy and amicable as he continues to speak, pulling me from my thoughts. You know, this might sound kind of silly, but... I really think we're bound to each other by fate. You might have thought our meeting yesterday was just by chance, and perhaps it is, in the end. But I'd like to think we are bound together by a thread of some sort. A thread? What do you mean? Red thread of, th of fate. I, I, I understand that reference. In other words, I think we are destined to have met. I think, no. I believe with my entire heart that we might have known one another in a past life. 
that we were meant to find each other in every life after that first one. Perhaps it was centuries ago, millennia, yet here you and I are. He sips his coffee, the steam threatening to fog up his glasses. He puts the cup back down before that can seriously happen. Here we are indeed, enjoying the atmosphere of a cafe, chatting away about such things. I don't know what to say, so I don't say anything. That sounds pretty crazy, dude. Really, all I can do is stare at him, my mouth slightly agape, eyes wide. But I have to say something. Well, I mean, that does sound kind of silly. <laughs> I don't know exactly what we're dealing with. I'm a detective. I, I, I don't dive headfirst into mysticism. That does sound silly. I'm not sure I can believe that. His expression falls, and he clearly looks disappointed. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be practical. Why is that? I just don't think it's very believable at all. Things like threads of fate, fate in general, those things are too cruel in the grand scheme of things. Cruel? Well, this is just hypothetical, but isn't it cruel to assume people will like the people fate tells them to? What if something about them changes from when they're born and when they meet that person? Even something like, this person will like to fish, anything can happen between then and now. So they might not end up liking to fish. Yona's jaw sets firm, and his glasses flash a bit of light. Is that how you view fate? If that's the case, my opinion of you... I gulp. Yona frowns. What? It's just idle thoughts. Maybe fate is real after all. You're quite the romantic, Yona. His smile turns shy, somewhat coy. I try to love as much as my body will allow. Though sometimes, it seems my body doesn't allow that much love, and I feel about to burst at the seams. Love is stored in the chest. <laughs> if I had someone to love, and they loved me back, he stalls, kicking his feet under the table, demure, embarrassed. I think it would be a lot easier for me, to be honest. Aww. He makes an interesting point, and I think I could fall in love with him. I think I could try, at any rate. Before any consequences cross my mind, I blurt something out, my mouth working faster than my mind. Yona. I'd like to ask you something. His attention, though it had already been on me a little bit, snaps to me immediately. He looks at me with questions in his eyes, but he otherwise says nothing, waiting for me to speak. I... Hold on. What am I doing? My mind finally catches up with me, and I suddenly feel extremely nervous. But I look at Yona. I really look at him, and I feel... I feel... insatiated. I want to devour Yona whole. I want to make him part of me. I want him to do the same for me. Uh-oh. I rub the back of my neck, sheepish. It's still embarrassing, so I glance away. Am I just, just gonna be like, um, well, I was thinking, can I, can I eat you a little bit, and then you eat me, just, just a little bit, mmm. <laughs> Yona, I, I'm staying in the hotel next door. Do you want to come, so that we can see if I can love you? This seems to catch him off guard. His posture stiffens, and he lowers both hands to the table. His gaze falls, too. He stays silent for a few moments. Then he looks back up, and I manage to catch his eyes. Yona smiles at me, so kindly, so wanting. Yes, why don't we? He abruptly stands up. He holds a hand out for me to take. 
Again, I just don't think. I immediately take his outstretched hand. Wow, he actually accepted. I didn't think he would. He laces his fingers with mine. His hand is just as warm as I imagined it to be. I look down at our interlocked hands, and butterflies, their wings violently fluttering within, fill my stomach and chest. I can feel and hear my heartbeat in my ear. Yona squeezes my hand, and I squeeze his. The other occupants of the building don't matter to me, or to him, anymore, for we're the only ones that truly exist in this moment. Oh, Moving kinda fast, though! We leave our half-drunken cups on the table, and Yona leaves behind all of his belongings, and we depart the cafe. You, you, left, you left your laptop there, dude? The pair of us go through the revolving door, and into the hotel lobby, and up the elevator, holding on to one another like our lives depended on it. Aww. As the elevator is taking its short trip, Yona turns to me, placing a hand on my cheek. He gazes into my eyes. A fire burns within him, hot and bright, and I can feel it. This must be his love. Am I gonna get eight and enjoy it? His boundless love that I'm meant to receive. There's no one else on the elevator with us, but even if there was, I wouldn't care. Leaning forward, I close the distance between us, my lips seeking his. He eagerly returns the gesture, sighing into my mouth. Detective. Yeah, are we gonna talk more about how I'm a famous detective? His voice carries some semblance of a warning tone, if playful. He puts his hand on my shoulders and gently pushes me away. When we part, both of us reluctant to do so even by a few inches, he's smiling, his face flushed. I want to make him mine. Why don't we wait until we're more private? I want him to make me his. Calm down, MC. Do I have to spray you with some water? You're right. Sorry. Got carried away. It's alright. I'm eager myself, you know. It's then that the elevator dings and the doors slide open. The hallway that waits in front of us is dimly lit. I take his hand again, leading him down to my room, 225. I swipe the keycard and the door opens for me, without any fanfare. The next few moments blur together. One moment we haven't even crossed the threshold into the room. The next, we're tumbling onto bed, kicking off shoes and socks haphazardly. Unlike my dream, he is the one that lies on the bed, and I'm the one that climbs on top of him. Yona peers up at me with eager, lustful, hungry eyes, and I can only assume I look down at him with the same exact expression. Leaning down, I bite into his neck, eliciting both a moan from his lips and a small amount of blood. The blood drips down onto the pure white, stiff sheets of the hotel room bed. Detective. Devour my love. Mm. Ah! Ah! I say nothing. I bite, and I gnaw, and I tear, and I swallow. I consume Yona's love in a flurry of crimson blood and white bone. I don't stop until nothing, not even myself, is left. I? Ah! 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 Wait. This isn't right. Yeah. Y yeah, what? Hold on a second. What? I have to get a hold of myself. Something is telling me this is definitely very, very wrong. You can say that again! Something is telling me this is definitely very, very wrong. 
Was that a credits fake out? Did you do that? Was that a dream? Was that some shenanigan? My head hurts. Jonas sits in front of me, still waiting for me to ask my question. Ever patient. Did I just... <laughs> did I just black out and get laid in my, in my dreams? I swallow a mouthful of... No, it isn't blood. It's just saliva. The headache. Blah. Maladaptive dra daydreaming? Hey, I do that. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be maladaptive daydreaming. Just taking a guy to your hotel room and eating him. The headache blossoms strongest at the base of my skull. Intensity of pain slowly inching its way up in order to coat the back of my head. I have to get a hold of myself. I have to get a hold of myself. Don't think about those things. Don't think, don't think, don't give in to them, don't give in to him. I don't mean to, but I end up wincing. My hands clam up. Sweat trickles down my back. Yona watches me carefully, curiously. I swallow again. I only taste coffee-flavored saliva, slick at the back of my throat. Twenty-five dollar... coffee. It mingles with the taste of iron unpleasantly. Sorry. My throat feels hoarse. What were we talking about again? Yona frowns, worry written across his face. He reaches a hand out to touch my arm. The gesture is gentle, his fingers warm. Uh. I pull my arm away, putting my head in my hands. Where Yona touched me just then, the skin feels burnt all the way down to the bone. But when I look, nothing has changed. It's still my normal skin and hair and bone, completely untouched within. Yona hesitates, then pulls his hand away, resting it in front of him again. Are you alright, right, detective? I feel as if I may vomit when he calls me that. When he says it in that tone. I don't want to remember. I don't want to think. Mm -mm. Sweat runs down my face. I stand up, the chair is scratching the floor in such a way that it makes even Yona wince. I'm fine. Uh-oh. Panic attack. I am, most assuredly, not fine whatsoever. But that is why I have to go anywhere else. I can't be near him. I can't be near Yona. You will ruin me. Yona says something to me. Something that I can't understand. I'm simply not parsing it. But he's definitely speaking to me. Hot. For the briefest of moments, he looks irritated, his brows furrowed and angled down, his glasses shining enough to obscure his actual eyes. That frightens me. I don't know why. I don't say anything further to him. I turn away from the table, approaching the counter. Hey, you still playing Castlevania? Just let me look at Alucard for a little while. That might calm me down. The barista does not look up. I don't care, though. That's fine. I just need to be away from him. I can't look at him. The sounds of movement come from behind me. I stiffen, pretending to be extremely interested in the display case on the counter. My breathing quickens. I feel him approaching. <clears throat> the darkness begins to close in around me. I can't breathe. The headache is spread to every inch of my head, leaving no part spared. The pain is overwhelming. My chest tightens, too, an invisible hand squeezing my lungs and heart. My stomach fills with molten lead. I close my eyes. The bell above the front door to the cafe chimes. The atmosphere instantly feels lighter, but I don't dare check quite yet. Only when I see his shadow pass over the barista's uncaring face, over the pristine counter, over the pastries in the display. Only when the shadow is gone does it get easier to breathe again. 
The barista gives me a look. For once, they appear sympathetic, which is different from their usual apathy. They nod. My shoulders slump. I bury my face in my hands, wiping away wetness I don't know the origin of. When I pull them away, my palms appear bright red. I choke down a scream, squeezing my eyes shut. Mm -hmm. Tentatively, I open one, and then the other, finding my hands are entirely clean. I force air into my lungs, filling my chest, then force it out. When I turn back around, and I do this with quite a bit of effort, Yona is gone. I swallow, and I taste just saliva. Yes. Mm -hmm. Shuffling along to my seat, I fall into the chair, slumping forward until my forehead presses against the cool surface of the table. My hands grip the back of my head, but I take comfort in the slight pressure. And then, I calm myself down. I don't do anything special, I don't think. I stare at the grain of the table, and I begin to count the lines that I can see. When I run out of grain in my direct line of sight, I start again. Usually I don't freak out like that, and I've never felt it so intensely. I don't know what came over me. I... I don't know. I don't know anything. Yeah, we still need to work on the fact that we're an amnesiac. Even though I wanted him gone, Yona must hold the key to who I am. If only I can find out who Yona really is. Hmm. Then, just maybe, I'll understand everything. I close my eyes, my breathing having returned to normal. Though I have a headache still, I feel fine otherwise, so my head raises of its own accord. I stand up, do a few stretches. Everything is truly so surreal. But I have to find out who I am. And why did you forget who you were? Hmm, or else... The man with the laptop seems troubled, and he doesn't immediately notice my presence when I approach him. I'm wondering if I should even approach him at all right now, actually. As I get closer, I realize he's talking to someone via a fancy one-ear, hands-free headset. Mm. Best leave that person to their business. I make to turn away, thinking I ought to come over to him later on, but at that moment, he looks up, sees me, and smiles gleefully. Look, I told you, you cannot break a building code for something as stupid as this. The contractor already said he can't do it. Yes, by contractor, I mean Roger. Who the heck else would I mean? But look, hey, listen to me for once. Something came up, so I have to go. But if you call me again, saying you... We'll talk about this later. Goodbye. Blech. The man practically rips the headset from his ear, throwing it carelessly onto the table. When he started to smile at me earlier, I had completely frozen in place. But when he looks back up at me, still smiling that maniacal smile, I remember I am a person that can move and interact with other people. I close the distance between the both of us, but I don't sit down at his table. I peer across the table, eyes falling on a rather hefty duffel bag. It's something so large, I'm struggling to think about what could possibly be in it. After all, how much stuff is this guy needing that he has to bring a duffel bag to a coffee place? Sir? Sir, do I need to keep my eye on you? You really saved me, pal. That specific client was giving me such a hard time. He'd kept me trapped for hours on that phone call ever since I sat down here this morning. Couldn't you just have told him something had come up anyway? He looks guilty all of a sudden. Sheepish. I don't really like lying much, even for small things like that. So it was good you came along. Talking with you here gave me the perfect excuse. Though, I only have a little bit of time before I have to get back to actual work. That darn idiot kept me from doing really much of anything. As a reward, I'll let you ask me a single question. Make it a good one, pal. Uh. His smile is crooked and he's missing a tooth. I can ask him a single question, 
But honestly, there's at least a dozen I can think of off the top of my head I could ask. This guy makes me really curious. Mentally, I narrow my options down to just a few. Sure, I'll take you up on that offer. Uh, uh, do you know who I am? Straight to the point. <laughs> I chew on the inside of my cheek before asking my chosen question, a bit nervous. Have you ever seen me come around here before? And if we have, have we ever spoken with one another before this moment? The man thinks about it for a few seconds, eyes scanning me up and down. He squints, searching deep within his mind in order to answer my question. I think I can see steam coming out of his ears. Don't think too hard, brother. Sorry, pal. You seem pretty new to me. Right. Of course. Something the matter? I just can't remember who I am, so I'm trying to figure it out. A look of sympathy crosses his features. He reaches out and touches me on the forearm, wrapping his hand around me loosely. Listen, we all lose ourselves every now and then. You can really only keep going forward. Yeah, you're right. I'm some sort of famous detective, though. At least I can research that. Ah, that right? You got the vibes for it. Oh, uh, thanks, I think. Anytime, pal. Well, that's about all the time I got today. The man closes his laptop rather gruffly, I might add. It's like the polar opposite of the delicate way Yona did the same action yesterday. Thanks for answering my question. I'm now going to save scum and ask, ask the other ones. <laughs> uh, what is it that you do? You said you were talking to a client. What is it you do for a living? Though I admit it was more like yelling. <laughs> if he is in fact working for a client and speaking to them that way, I'm surprised he's still employed. I'm an architect. I design buildings in layman's terms. Thankfully, I do remember what an architect is, and what buildings are. Mm -mm. You know the hotel next to here? I nod. That's where I'm staying, so of course I know it. Hmm, I wonder if this is some sort of important clue. He looks up at me, very proudly, beating his chest with a fist once. I built that. Well, I designed it. But tomato, tomato, am I right? How many floors does it have? Even the elevator doesn't show them all, I think. The one I was in only went up to 44. He holds a single finger up matter-of-factly. There's actually one elevator that does have the capability to go to every floor. But it's restricted to the bigwigs and housekeepers, I think. They only wanted one. Hmm. As for your other question, <laughs> you tried to pull a fast one on me, pal. He laughs as if this is the funniest thing that has ever, in his entire life, maybe 50 years of his life, been told to him. <laughs> I told you one question and one question only. There's no way you'll get another answer out of me. Oh, yeah? He shrugs. At least, not right now. Maybe later. Next time we meet. Okay. He glances at his wristwatch, still smiling pretty wide. I think that will be... That will be the question that I, uh, continue on. That seems important. Have you ever talked to Yona? Have you ever talked to Yona? You know, big chest, extremely handsome, cool glasses. I was just speaking to a man with lavender hair. I resist the urge to twist my face up into one of discomfort at the thought of Yona. Oh, didn't see. I know who you're talking about, though. So the man really didn't see. Really? What do you make of him? That Yona fellow? To tell you the truth, pal, I haven't gotten too many chances to speak with him. Though every time I come here, he's already in here, and I come crack at dawn. It's got me wondering if he waits outside for the barista to open. Hmm, mm, that sounds important too. Other than that, he normally just keeps to himself. I always see him writing. Usually I can't really come in and dilly-dally with people I ain't know. Too busy, see? But Yona is like a fixture of the cafe. It'd be weird if I showed up one day and he ain't here. Sort of like... Dunno. 
It'd have me guessing if someone like him was real at all. Hmm. Interesting. That's sort of specific. I'm a specific kind of guy. He beams at me, proud. I give him an earnest smile. Or maybe I should end with that one since we got some more information on Yona. Uh, what's in the bag, pal? Suppose my first question is, what's in the bag? I nod towards it as an indicator of what I'm talking about in particular. The man's smile doesn't change in any way when he follows my gaze, but the air around him does, inexplicably, grow tenser. He looks back at me. Oh, you know, a little of this, a little of that. The essentials, namely. But what would you consider essentials, my friend? If he was trying to not be suspicious, he's failing spectacularly. Yeah. Sensing my apprehension, he continues, Someone like you don't gotta worry about it, alright? You can't tell me anything about it at all? He contemplates, then shrugs. There's a video rental store on the street over, and I rent a lot of videos at once. I have to return them later this evening, so I usually carry them in a big bag. Editor me, why, why, does, why does the line, I have to return some videotapes, strike me as scary? return some videotapes. Can carry other things in the bag while I'm at it too. Win-win, in my eyes. I stare at him, frowning. He laughs, waving a hand. Come on now, honest, I told you. I don't really like lying. You can trust me. Oh, all right. He looks at his wristwatch, but I suspect it's more just to stop meeting my line of sight than actually checking the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna- I'm gonna go with that Yona question, cause we got a little bit more info from that. Thanks for answering my question. He begins to pack up his things, and when he straightens up, he claps me on the back. Blech. It nearly sends me flying. He uses so much force and gusto for no good darn reason. Dude, ugh. No problem, pal. Thanks for keeping me busy, and off the phone. Hopefully I'll see you around sometime. I'll make extra time for you then. That'd be nice. I've got a few more questions after all. Right, and I got a few more answers. See ya. Hmm. He flicks his wrists and raises his eyebrows in farewell before slinging his bag over his shoulder and hauling it out of the cafe. Hmm. But I watch him stop just outside the door and pull his cell phone out of his pocket. His expression instantly sours. He answers the phone and begins yelling. I'll look away now and focus on other things, if only to give him privacy. Oh yeah, there was another person in here. Hello. I almost feel bad about bothering her. She's completely absorbed in whatever she's reading. During the few minutes that I observe her, she'll occasionally smile a tiny grin or giggle softly or shake her head disapprovingly. She usually ends up shaking her head whenever she's about to turn the page for some reason. Well, enough standing here looking like a creep. She looks nice enough, anyway. I'm sure she'll be helpful. Mm, I don't know. After approaching her, standing perpendicular to the seat she's in at the table, I gently tap the table in an effort to get her attention, but not startle her. The woman peels her eyes off of her book, training them on me, almost expectantly. Her expression shifts, though. While she is looking expectantly, waiting for me to say something, her smile has fallen off her face completely. I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am. I knew I shouldn't have bothered her, all right, but it's too late now. Sorry, am I bothering you? I can leave. She shakes her head, pointing at the chair opposite of where she's seated. Oh, no, 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 that won't do. She nigh violently slaps her book closed and places it on the table next to her iced coffee. Come now, stand up for what you believe in. Sit down with me now that you've broken my focus. Ah, she is mad, but she attempts to hide it. She is bad at hiding it. Sure, thank you. Please don't, don't throw a knife at me, lady. I smile. 
unsure if I really should be thanking her, and sit down in the designated seat. I set my mug on the table, close enough that it's within easy reach. Her brows furrow as she suddenly peers inside, then her face blooms with a smile. It's clearly fake and judgmental, with the way it doesn't reach her eyes whatsoever. <laughs> I see you're a fan of sugar and cream. I nod, my lips pulling into a tight line. Um, yep, I am. I don't know why she's judging me for this, though. Her own drink is almost completely white. Eh. She reaches for her cup, which isn't that much of a reach at all, and slurps it through the straw, somewhat loudly. I deserve this, I think, as I cringe at the sound. Now, is there something you needed, or did you interrupt me for no good apparent reason? You don't seem the type to do the latter, though. <laughs> Her laughter is shrill enough. It makes my ears ring. I cringe again. She places a hand on the purple and blue book next to her. What's your reading, lady? I should only ask her two questions maximum, I think, if only for my own sanity. Uh, what's your reading? I suppose the most obvious thing to come to mind would be, what is it that you're reading? The woman purses her lips, terse overall. One of her hands still rests on the back of the cover of the book. It's brightly colored, even though I can't see the front cover. I can't read the spine from here either. Vivid blues mix with pastel purples and off-whites, forming no sort of cohesion at all. The book I was enjoying greatly before you've come to ask me random things was, of course, my favorite. I've read it many a times. It really surprises me each time I go through it, as if I've forgotten what had transpired the previous week. It is none other than Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Ooh! It's one of my favorite books. Hmm. Oh? A clue? A pang of recognition strikes my chest. I've heard of it. No, I've also read it. Yes, I've surely read it. I remember reading it a long, long time ago, but I did read it. The woman's face relaxes, and suddenly she doesn't seem as twisted. Her smile might even seem a tad genuine this time. Really? Really? What did you make of it? Did you enjoy it? Everyone who reads it enjoys it, that's a fact. Not wanting to ruin her newly made good mood, I nod, even if I can't exactly remember if I did enjoy it or not. Yes, I did. The imagery is incredibly vibrant and clear, isn't it? That was the wrong thing to say. She, for the first time, frowns. Perhaps. Perhaps not. <clears throat> a silence falls between us, and I, too, frown. She's acting just like the characters in the book. Yeah, aloof and gosh darn... Like, when I've been listening to it as a sleep, as a sleep aid, and just most of the characters are really rude. Just leave Alice alone, please. Just... The, the Duchess putting her arm around Alice, like, let me tell you something. Uh, the caterpillar being insufferable. Like, the nicest character is the Cheshire Cat. Perhaps I should move on. Uh, what can you tell me about Yona? Am I going to get more of a clue? I was just speaking with a lavender-haired man. I resist the urge to twist my face up into one of discomfort at the thought of Yona. I didn't see, but I do know who you're talking about. So the woman really didn't notice. Hmm. What can you tell me about him? She harumps. I'm thinking maybe she just doesn't like speaking to people in general. I haven't heard that term used outside of Blazing Saddles. Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph, harumph. Everyone knows Yona, and Yona knows everyone. He's here all day, every day. All he does is either read or write on his laptop. He doesn't speak to me, and I don't speak to him. She pauses, then removing her hand from the book, looking down at her palm. Though, sometimes... Why'd the music stop? 
Oh, I just noticed there's a leave button there. I can, I can just dip. She peers at me from between her spread fingers, closing one eye. I want to speak to him, which is rare for me. I don't ever want to speak to anyone, ever, and that's a fact. But him, I feel drawn towards him. I do, and I don't like it. That's why I usually go home early on days like these. I finish only four chapters before going home, instead of the usual eight. I don't want to be in the same room with him for long. Bad news, I think. Bad, bad news. I trust this woman. She understands Alice and Wonderland. There are certain employees that have quit too because of him. I think because of him, anyway, and I usually think right. But others love him. Others can't get enough of him. She leans forward, then slams her hand on the book's cover again. Resist it, and you shall be free. I feel like I should trust this woman. I don't know why. I honestly have no words. For a long few moments, I just stare at her. She seems to be waiting for me to say something. Noted. I'll take heed. What an odd woman. I think that's all I- Hold on a second. If I save scum that guy, I'm gonna save scum this lady. Does it ever get noisy in here? I feel like that's a fine question to ask, isn't it? Especially if you read a lot in this cafe, then surely you must get bothered a lot. Her smile falters, but it does not fade entirely. Her eyes blank for a second or two, then she stares fiercely at me. Yes, I do get bothered quite often, though most times everyone knows better. Ouch. Well, that's my fault. <laughs> I nod. Looking away for a moment. Let's move on. Uh, have we met before? Do you know- do you know who I am? I still don't know much about who I am. Perhaps this woman can shed some light on it. On me. Have we met before? She eyes me up, squinting. She smacks her lips, takes a sip of her drink, slurping, and leans back, crossing her arms over her chest. No. I've never seen you before, not once in my life. She says it so matter-of-factly, so definitively, that it makes me self-conscious. Makes me feel stupid for even daring to ask. But, 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 I think I've seen you in my dreams. Huh? Huh? Yes, yes, there's no mistaking it. I've definitely seen someone like you in my dreams. If not you, then someone that looks very, very, very similar. The last time I spoke with her was two or three days ago. I had read four chapters at home, then went to bed, and she was there. In the dark, yes, in the dark, she was there, and she called out to me. Don't let your guard down. Remember the being most important to you. That's what she said. And then she disappeared. And I had a pleasant dream in a theater with the Cheshire Cat at my side. She shrugs, nod, nodding. I am a great actor, you know. That's a fact. Here, I wrote down what she said to me that night. Since she's you, you can have it. Oh. Thank you. Maybe I should become a prophet of sorts. Uh, what you drinking? What have you gotten to drink today, lady? I tilt my head in the direction of her ice to drink. What did you get to drink today? I'm looking for recommendations, so I might try whatever you got. My initial impression, that it must have been coffee with a lot of cream. But now, I'm not so sure what it is. She picks it up and slurps it again, just as loud as the previous time. I try not to wince, but I can see it in her eyes that she notices anyway. I got an iced blend decaf with eight scoops of vanilla bean, four pumps of sugar-free vanilla syrup, two pumps of caramel syrup, and one packet of artificial sweetener. Is not sweet enough, my friend. Could be sweeter. Light ice. By that, I mean there should be no more than four medium-sized ice cubes. One should pour cream into it for two seconds. 
Oh, and of course, I never take paper straws. I must have at least one plastic straw with which to drink it. On second thought, maybe I won't take this woman's suggestion. Is that why the is that why the barista was so grumpy because they had to just fish, finish making that? If only so the barista doesn't kill me. That sounds great. Thank you. As she slurps, even louder. I try to think if I need to ask anything else. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that uh, journal entry on Yona. I think that's all I. The woman smiles at me. And she picks up her book. She didn't even let me finish before turning her attention back to her reading, caught in the story. Now, I was just about to finish the second chapter for the day, wasn't I? I think I can stay for the full eight chapters today. How delightful. <laughs> bathroom? Can I go to the bathroom? This door bears a plaque that reads bathroom. I don't have to go right now. And even if I did, the door is locked. All right. Hey, semi-cool barista who was playing Castlevania. What's up? Since no one has come in, and no one else has needed anything from behind the bar, the barista remains seated on the stool, their legs propped up in an empty cardboard box. I almost don't want to approach them again, but, well, I figure I might as well get another drink because, well, my throat is parched. I'm so thirsty, I feel like I might die. I don't know, is a cup of water gonna cost me $32.99? Maybe that's a little overkill. Maybe it's not. Maybe I will only partially die. I don't know if that's possible or not. Anyway, I just want something to drink. So I'll grin and bear with their terrible bedside manners. Not bedside, that's the wrong word. I meant customer service manners. That sounds not a lick better. <clears throat> when I approach the counter, they, predictably, do not look up. They continue mashing the buttons on their handheld. They must know I'm here, though, because I swear I saw their eyebrow twitch. <laughs> um, sorry. Hey, excuse me. They don't answer. Hello? Can you hear me? Look, I know the Tragic Prince is a bangin' song, but I need your attention, friend. They don't answer. I'd like to order. It'll only take a moment. They heave an incredibly heavy sigh, like they're breathing out all the air in the entire world. The barista pauses the game and gets to their feet, setting the handheld off to the side. Wordlessly, they stand behind the counter, waiting. Well, what would you recommend? What? You're not getting the same thing? What an indecisive loser. No, no, I just wanted to branch out, expand my tastes, really. What would you suggest for someone who wants to really get into it? They consider the question, thoughtful for the first time since I've spoken to them. The Heavenly Haze. The... what? It's on the secret menu. God, you don't know anything, do you? In an effort to not appear like a loser in front of this likely teenager, I shake my head. I've heard of it. I have. True and honest. I just haven't looked at it lately, so I must have forgotten. I'll take a heavenly haze. Large. The barista doesn't say anything after that. They simply turn around, pulling all kinds of contraptions out of various cabinets. All kind of ingredients. Friend, you're not going to try to poison me, are you? Goodness. What did I get myself caught up in? As they're setting up twisting tubes in what appears to be a chemist chemistry flasks. Okay. I call to them from behind. One question. Could you remind me of the price? Without looking over to me, and also without stopping the setup and beginning of the brewing process, they reply. 7227. Take it or leave it. What? Bye. Out. Outrageous. I expected it to be somewhat more expensive than the price of a regular coffee, but this... This... Should I take out a loan just for coffee? Though, I suggest taking it, since I've already added in some rare beans, and it'll cost you anyway. 
Oh, no, no, I wouldn't dream of turning down a heavenly haze. I do quite enjoy them. MC, I would have walked out of that building, so I would have walked out of the building for the $25 cup of coffee. This earns a curious pause out of them, but they continue. <laughs> Time passes in silence after that. I'm grateful no other customers come in or need something, because it takes what seems like forever for the barista to finish this single cup of coffee. I wonder if I would have gotten it quicker had I gotten a small instead of a large. When it's done, the barista dutifully puts all of the equipment and other items away. Only once the counter is back to normal do they turn to me. They hand me a cup. The liquid inside is still boiling. No, it's not boiling at all, but simply bubbling. What, what does it say? What does the journal say about that? An insanely priced cup of coffee that took at least ten minutes to either brew or alchemize. I'm not sure the correct term in this case. Even though it appears to be plain black coffee, it continues to bubble. I'm not sure if I should drink it after all. <laughs> a puff of smoke erupts from the dark brown liquid, forming a skull that dissipates into the air. You are trying to poison me, aren't you? What's your deal, pal? It must be a trick of the light. That's all. I just saw a normal steam. Wrong. I'm hesitant to take it, especially for such a large price. But I don't like to waste any food or drink. Right. I don't like to be wasteful in anything I do. I remember now. Hmm. I hand over my credit card, feeling the frown I'm wearing become a part of my very essence of being. They take the plastic like I'm not handing over nearly three quarters of a hundred dollars. Ugh. If Yona comes here so often, he must be rich. That it? Oh, yes, that's... Yeah, that'll do. Thank you. Oh, I'd, I'd like to also get a muffin, but that might cost me one of my fingers. I regret coming over here now. Fish. On the wall next to the bookshelf is a framed photo of a fish. No, wait. On second thought, as I get closer, it is a fish. Has it been stuffed? Oh. I know the type of fish. I do know it. But I can't think of it right now. Hmm. Still within the frame, but beneath the fish, is a label that says, Press me. Oh no. Below that is a bright red shiny button. Should I press the button? Sure. Consequences from pressing this button do not ever bother to cross my mind. I immediately press the button. I wait with bated breath. A, a ditty little tune begins to play. Taxidermied fish. I wanna know... Can you help me? The fish begins to sing, clear and bright. I can easily understand all of the lyrics. Am I allowed to stay? <laughs> Fascinating. Suddenly, the head lifts off of the frame, and it turns its body to stare directly at me. Huh. New fear unlocked. Take me to the river, drop me in the water. The entire body flattens back against the frame. Its body swells, then thins again, as if it was pausing to take a breath. <laughs> I haven't seen one of those singing fish in real life. I've just only ever seen them on TV. <laughs> but I find them ridiculous and terrifying. The head lifts off the frame. And again, it stares directly at me. Ugh. I feel as if it's talking to me. Take me to the river. Put me in the water. Once more, the fish flattens, and the song comes to an end. I look around, <laughs> wondering if anyone saw me do this. Though I suppose they would have heard it first. But I wonder... If I should press the button again. Let's do that again. Again. Again, again. I wanna know. Can you help me? 
am I allowed to stay? Take me to the river, put me in the water. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. I resist the urge to press the button. I could stand here all day and press it over and over if I'm not careful. Hey, that song's pretty good. <laughs> Luckily, I'm somewhat careful. I like this fish. Except when it's staring directly at me. It's no ordinary fish, though. I wonder if this fish is some kind of giant clue. Like the answers to everything lies within this fish and its message of taking it back to the river. Or maybe it's just a bass. It comes to me abruptly. This is a bass. But not just any bass. A white bass. In other words, the... Marone chrysops. On average, they're just over a foot long. They're related to the striped bass, of course. But the striped bass is much, much larger, usually. But the white bass were fighters, somewhat difficult to catch. They thrive in deep and clear waters. Right. I must like to fish. That's the second time they brought up fishing. Hmm. Fish. Perhaps all of the answers do lie within the fish. The fish! A taxidermied version exists on my wall at my own home, though it doesn't sing. How hard is it to taxidermy a fish, I wonder? I'm going to have to get a singing version when I'm done here. What was I doing here? Alright, let's... let's... Let, 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 let's get back to the story. There's a lot of things to click on, and I want to click on them. Alright, I... I feel like I might get a clue from this Faust painting. And then we're and then we're going. Then we're leaving. The poster immediately draws my eyes. It'd be hard to ignore it, probably. It's entirely black and white. The silhouette of a horned and winged man, if it is indeed a man at all, pops out against the pure white of the moon. Ooh. He reaches forward, downward. Beneath him is a town or village. The spire of a church rises above all the other buildings. At the top of the poster it reads, Faust. <laughs> I've never seen this version of the tale, but I've heard of it, and I've seen it performed live on stage. The movie itself is basically a cult classic. The fact that a poster of it is plastered to the wall in a small, independent cafe is a little concerning. I stare at it for a little while longer before turning away. Out of the corner of my eyes, I see the beating of wings. When I turn back, Mephistopheles hasn't moved. A trick of the light, surely. Hmm. I have a feeling that there's something there's something about that painting. There's some themes here. All right, let's let's go. It's getting kind of late. The sun is starting to set. The light pouring in from outside the window casts odd shadows onto the floor of the cafe and the people within. Should I go back to rest at the hotel? Yeah, let's go. We'll be here all day. I think I've seen and done and spoken to people enough. I'm getting kind of sleepy. And my wallet can't take any more of this coffee business. I'm getting kind of sleepy. As if on cue, I stifle a yawn and fail. The sun continues to set, turning its huge eye through the window and onto me inside. Well... Did you even drink it? I return my cups to the counter. The barista doesn't even spare me an acknowledgement. That's fine with me. Before I exit the cafe, I should go over a few things. Thank goodness I've been taking notes. I pull out the notebook and reread what I've written down. Hmm. I feel like I've gotten nowhere, really. But I also feel like I've learned a lot today. I'm just one step closer to the truth. I know it. But we learned that we like to fish. We learned that Yona really frequents this, uh, cafe. Hmm. But only one. I feel sick to my stomach, and a frown tugs the corners of my mouth down. For some reason, I feel like I'm running out of time. Regardless, I should get some rest. Though I know it's futile, I wave to the barista, who still doesn't look away from their game, and I leave the cafe. Hmm. 
The bell chimes again, and I take comfort in its presence. I look up and down the street, but it still seems like the three shops on either side of the cafe are still closed, even though I swear it's a little earlier than when I left yesterday. Hmm. I'm still especially disappointed the fish and game shop keeps its doors shut tight. Mm-hmm, something about fishing again. I was hoping to peruse its wares. I enter the hotel instead, forlorn, and take the elevator up to my room. I better not find a certain lavender-haired gentleman waiting on my bed with rose petals everywhere. Like the previous night, I don't bother to change, only pulling off my shoes and collapse onto the bed. I stare at the unfamiliar, yet familiar ceiling. This is not my home, but I've been here for long enough. Or have I really been here for that long at all? It's difficult to tell. With a sigh, I turn over onto my side, pulling the covers up to my chin. I shut my eyes. Sleep is a little more difficult tonight. Yeah, after I drank that heavenly haze. But once I fall asleep, I do not wake up. But... Mm -mm. I do not dream. At least, I don't think I do. That's not promising. Hmm? Mm. Hmm. Perhaps I need to ask more questions. Now this says it's part one. I wonder if we're actually going to find anything out, but we can try. I can definitely do some different things. Hmm, let's look around some more. What's this kitty poster? This cool French kitty poster. An avant-garde poster that depicts a cat with fierce eyes set on a golden background. The tail of said cat loops down, partially obscuring the text on the red section of the bottom. It reads, Tournée du Chat Noir. The red area continues with, De Rodolphe Sally. As my eyes are scanning over the words, the cat blinks at me. You seem to be hallucinating a lot, friend. But when I look closer, and even reach a hand out to touch it, the poster is nothing more than plain paper. I sigh in relief. I... it didn't really move after all. Honestly, the way it stares at me is kind of creepy. If I move even slightly, the eyes track me, following me wherever I go. Even if I get further away from it, the cat continues to stare at me. Best to just forget it. It's even there for now. Uh, didn't check out these books here. There's not a single spot on the bookshelf remaining. It's so completely and utterly stuffed with books. The shelves in the middle row bow inwards and downwards. Ooh. I feel as if removing any would cause the entire shelf to break. It's probably best to leave it alone. As for what type of books are on the shelf, I can't really tell. I want to say all of the titles that stretch along each spine are in a language I surely can read, but when I go to focus on any one of them, the words blur together. Leo! Leo, are we still in the dream? Cause, you know they say that you can't read stuff in dreams. Mm. I try squinting. I try closing one eye. I try leaning closer. But to no avail. No matter what I do, I can't seem to read what books they are. Maybe I'm just tired. Or maybe you you need to do some, uh, some lucid dream exercises. Look at your watch, look away, then look again. Did the, did the chine time change drastically? Look at the front of your hand, look at the back of your hand, look at the front of your hand. Ask yourself out loud, is this a dream? I'll try again another day. Now I'm on edge. Hmm. Oh, I can look at the, uh, the register. An ex- oh. oh. it's an espresso machine. I thought it was a register. An espresso machine. Since I've only ever gotten coffee that doesn't contain espresso, I've never seen it being used. I wonder if Yona prefers espresso or plain coffee, 
Or does he like them both for different reasons? I don't really like espresso, though. But if I got a shot, would Yona be impressed? Before I can think of ordering a shot of espresso, don't do it, my... your wallet can't take it. <laughs> the barista glares at me. So in the beginning, like a sensible person, I talk to the barista first, but what if I talk to Yona first? So when Yona starts talking about the red string of faith, I said that sounds silly and that made him sad. So what if I say, uh, I'd like to think that too. I, I would like to think that you and me are connected by some kind of invisible red thread. Hehe. <laughs> I'd like to think that, too. You know... It does sound silly, but... His expression falters slightly. I hurry on with what I was about to say, so that he doesn't jump to conclusions. I'd like to think such a thing, too. He smiles at me again, then leans forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. Fate and time are in love, you know. It's quite sweet. Quite admirable. Really? I whisper my words back. Yes, that's why fate knows what it knows before someone is even born. It knows what will happen to any person, to any living being, an infinite amount of time before they are even born, let alone physically conceived. So they've made a sort of bargain with one another? He continues, leaning away, his tone returning to a normal volume. After a moment, he seems satisfied and nods. You can think of it that way. I prefer to think of it more as marriage. Who are you, dude? Me? If not literal, then a marriage of ideals. Huh. A marriage, is it? I think about the dream from last night. Again. Yona's hot lips on my skin. His teeth sinking into. Hey! What do we say about that maladaptive daydreaming? Get a hold of yourself! A marriage is one thing, but that wasn't even close to one at all. You're quite the romantic, Yona. His smile turns shy, somewhat coy. I try to love as much as my body will allow. Though sometimes, it seems my body doesn't allow that much love, and I feel about to burst at the seams. Once again, I'm looking disrespectfully at your chest. So I've gone through it a few more times, changing things here and there, trying to find anything, and I may need a walkthrough, I may need a hint, I may need a clue, or maybe we'll get more answers in part two. Yona is definitely up to some shenanigans. There's absolutely some tomfoolery going along here. But I don't know what it is. So I think for now, I will stop here. If you have any thoughts, theories, comments, hints, I would love for you to make a comment in the comment section. Aside from the excruciating panic attacks that Yona causes, I like looking at him. And if you like this video and would like to see more of my silly videos, be sure to hit the likes, thumbs up looking button there. And anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope.